join Forum IES Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IES Rank 1, Anudeep Durisheti, Shruti Sharma, and Ishita Kishore. Hello everyone, welcome to the series Key Concepts in Anthropology. The topic that we are going to discuss today is related to fertility. So there is a subtopic in anthropology syllabus called fertility and fecundity. And more specifically, I have, take, I have taken up this particular keyword fertility. And we are here going to talk about the determinants or the factors responsible for decreasing fertility rates across the world. Okay, to quote, where is this coming from? I hope you all are aware of this. No? Now that we know India is the largest populated country in the world and all. But if you look at the major trend with respect to fertility parameters, what is the major trend? The World Economic Forum has reported that there is a decline of fertility levels by 50%. If I compare the year 1880 and the early 2000s, a decline of 50%. And the second indicator, which has been broadly in news, is that the age at which the first menstruation happens, which happens to be the beginning of the fertility period for a girl. So the term, exact term is menarche. So the age of menarche has been consistently decreasing as we are moving towards more and more developed society. And the ages have reduced from as much as 17 years to 12 years. And in some parts of the world, even 10 years. Why are we seeing these kinds of changes with respect to the reproductive health of women across the world? That is the first question. So that is what we are going to talk about over here. That what is the anthropological connotation behind the determinants of decreasing fertility levels? You all must have studied at any points in your preparation about uh, Mal Malthusian theory, right? Malthus was the first person who predicted that if we keep on reproducing at these levels and provided ample food opportunities are present around human beings, there will come a time when the food will become scarce and people will be more and therefore it will culminate in a dead end, in a war. Because food was increasing in AP, whereas population was increasing in GP. This was Malthusian idea of what will happen. And when he gave this particular paradigm, the, the uh, time period from where he's coming from during the Industrial Revolution was because at that particular time period, there were very high birth rates. And why there were high birth rates? Because the mortality, mortality rate was also high. If you go to pre-industrial levels of uh, the socio-economic life of people at that point in time, you will see that people used to have more children because mortality rate was high and most of them would die. So therefore, the biggest idea was to have as many as you can so that the maximum survive. But what happened as we started moving towards more developed societies when industrial revolution came in, when LPG reforms came in, when globalization came in, there was a decline in the family size. And along with the decline in family size, there was also more independence with respect to the decision-making capacity of women, which made sure that they were more educated, they were more uh, recipient to the information, they were more, uh, you know, they were mo they were able to take more informed decisions. So, therefore, what happened? They wanted smaller sizes of family. And the discourse of having children shifted from the number of children a couple should have to the quality of children you have. You might have six to eight children, but you aren't able to give them quality education. You aren't able to make them, you know, stand for themselves. 
be independent so that doesn't make sense so what happened during this transition from the pre industrial levels to the modern day what kind of factors were playing around which affected the fertility rates and what was going on with the larger paradigm okay that that is one aspect of this research which i am uh, depicting here in front of you right so i'll just give you a brief representation of the fertility determinants so like i was telling you when socio economic development began we will see that there is a decrease in family size so as i was telling you the quality of the family is much more important and this will lead to birth control in fact even on policy front it will be seen that people are demanding for birth control second phase in the second phase we see that there are people who start doing family planning voluntarily what is voluntary family planning where there is entirely the couple's decision with respect to the size of the family that they want to have and the quality of life which they can give to that family right so to satisfy their demand we had newer techniques right so there were abortions there were contraceptives which were made available right so all these factors they are impacting fertility i hope you are able to relate and the third kind of policy fronts can be a special set of policies called as anti natalist policies what do i mean by anti natalist policy so these are basically coercive policies of certain governments and the most precarious example in this case is china which for the largest period of time had the one child policy so coercive policies ensure that people have the state's desired family size not your desired but what kind of a family size does the state desire and when this happens there is mandatory birth control and what do i mean by mandatory birth control that you have to control the birth rates and all these three factors were affecting the fertility now the kind of stage we are sitting in is the epitome of socio economic development in larger spaces with respect to where we began from since the pre industrial levels so therefore what other factors are at play if i talk about today's women so here there are a multitude of uh, factors acting together the first set of factors are economic factors second cultural yes or no economic cultural ideational and sociological right so these are the factors which are acting together so like i was telling you if you look at this factor economic factor if you educate a woman she will take more informed decisions with respect to the family size because her decision making power increases she feels empowered she feels independent so she can take prudent decisions that is with respect to the economics with respect to the cultural realm so if you look at the early or if i say even today this kind of meta preference for son exists even in today's india okay son meta preference where uh, there is a they would prefer if there is a son right so that kind of uh, factors are cultural where there is a cultural uh, connotation a notion that yes we it is a conditioning that uh, if you have a son in the family it's going to be very good ideational and sociological factors are more or less related to the dynamics of other factors how much healthcare is accessible to women how open are women to accept healthcare because in certain tribal pockets we even have certain challenges in taking women to the healthcare center phc also right so all these factors together are culminating into a decline in the fertility rate 
this particular trend this was a trend that what kind of trends or what kind of policies what kind of developments all over the world have impacted the fertility levels right so more on this in our classes thank you so much